Hi friends, it's Mora Bela. I hope you're having a great day. And today I wanted to read some books together. Are you ready for our first book? This book is called Caps for Sale. Have you ever read it before at home or in school? Well, this is what it looks like. Caps for Sale. Written and illustrated by Esfir Slobodkina. Caps for Sale. And it says the title again, Caps for Sale. And here's the peddler with all of his caps. Once there was a peddler who sold caps, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town, slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time <clears throat> until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray cap, then then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, ah, he was refreshed and rested. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. <gasps> Where did the caps go? He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey. On every monkey was a gray, or a brown, or a blue, or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. Can you shake your finger like the peddler? But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them and said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their heads back, hands back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot. Can you stamp your foot? And he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. 
but the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, You monkeys, you! You must give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap and threw it on the ground and began to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap and all the gray caps and all the brown caps and all the blue caps and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly he walked back to town calling, caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. The end. Ah. And that was such a fun story. The monkeys took the peddler's caps, but they gave it back to him when they copied him, putting, taking his hat and throw it, throwing it onto the ground, right? Are you ready for our second book? Book number one was Caps for Sale. Book number two is another story about Pete the Cat. Last week we read a book in, about Pete the Cat becoming a fireman. Today, we're going to read a book about Pete the Cat going to bed at a sleepover party. Are you ready? Pete the Cat and the Bedtime Blues. Pete the Cat and the Bedtime Blues. And this book was written by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete and the gang had a great day. They'd been at the beach, surf and sun, and tons of fun. I see they're all wearing their bathing suits. Do you ever wear your bathing suit and go to the beach? But when the sun went down, they didn't want the fun to end. Pete had an idea. <gasps> Hey, how about a sleepover? More time for tons of fun. Groovy, Pete's place, let's go. Let's go have a sleepover at Pete's house. The party was fun, but they knew they couldn't stay up all night. The gang decided it was time to say good night. On went the pajamas and out went the light. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, Toad. Good night, Pete. Pete was just about to catch some Z's. He was just about to fall asleep. When clap, clap, clap. Who did that? Pete asked. It was me, said Grumpy Toad. I don't want to go to bed. I want to clap instead. Pete covered his head. This cool cat needs to go to bed. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, toad. Good night, Pete. Time to sleep. Pete tried to fall asleep when rat-a-tat-tat. Who did that? Pete asked. It was me, said Gus the platypus. I don't want to go to bed. I want to jam instead. Pete covered his head. And he, what's the platypus banging on? That looks like a drum. Pete covered his head. This cool cat needs to go to bed. Time to sleep. Good night, Gus. Good night, alligator. Good night, toad. Good night, Pete. 
Pete closed his eyes to go to sleep when he heard munch, munch, munch. Pete had a hunch. It was alligator. He always wanted to eat. What could Pete do? All the clapping, rat-a-tat-tatting, and munching was giving him the bedtime blues. <sighs> Pete had a groovy idea. He got out his favorite bedtime story and started to read, first to himself and then to the gang. Pete noticed it was finally quiet. No more clapping, no more rat-a-tat-tatting, and no more munching. They all settled down. No one made a sound. Pete yawned and turned off the light. Good night, sleep tight, time to fall asleep. And I see all the friends did go to sleep. Do you sometimes feel very calm and relaxed and ready to sleep when you hear a story? Tomorrow was another day for surfing, sun, and tons of fun. And that's what it looks like they're dreaming about that as they're sleeping. What do you dream about sometimes? The end. Hooray! Thank you, friends, for joining me when I read Caps for Sale, and then when I read about Pete the Cat and his bedtime blues. And he came up with such a good solution. The problem was they wanted to stay awake, and the solution was reading a book, just like we're do we did right now. I love reading books. They make me feel calm and happy. Goodbye, friends. Thank you for joining. I'll see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.